Welcome to San Joaquin Spotlight, a public affairs program featuring conversations about life in the central San Joaquin Valley. This program is brought to you in partnership between KFSR 90.7 FM and CMAC Fresno. I'm your host, Sevog Tatiosian. Today we're going to be talking about water and a new documentary, all local. With our guests, we have Joe Del Bosque, we have Carlos Osquera, and Amanda Carvajal. All of you, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So who wants to start and talk about the water issue that led to this documentary? Well, since I'm the farmer and I'm the, the one that is uh, experiencing the issues with the water, I'll begin. Uh, basically, what we have is um, we have had shortages of water that have been based on not only hydrology, but also based on regulations that, um, that regulate the water that comes south from the delta. Now, our water comes from Northern California, Mount Shasta, and it comes down the Sacramento River, comes to the delta, it has to cross the delta to where our pumps are, and then from there the pumps run it down to us through canals and through San Luis uh, Reservoir. There's a problem in the delta with endangered species, and oftentimes um, our pumps are restricted because of the, what they call fish actions in the delta. And so <clears throat> some years we're restricted um, to 80%, 40%. This year we happen to be at 20%, which is pretty severe. 20%? 20% of our supply, that's all we got this year. How do you, what does that mean to the local economy when only 20% of the water is on? Well, that means that if you don't have water, you're going to leave some, some land unplanted. And when you leave land unplanted, there's going to be less dollars brought in, farm dollars. There's going to be less jobs for people, farm workers. And of course, there's going to be less supplies and, and materials bought from the local economy. So it, it affects everybody. Usually when we heard about the water thing, people would say West Fresno County, West Fresno County. Amanda, you're from Merced. Correct. Had, is this something that impacted you as well? Yes, it did. Actually, you can see people in the march in the movie that are wearing high school shirts from local high schools on the east side of Merced County. Uh, this affects this decision that occurred in 2009 is something that's likely to occur because the precedence was set then that it, we could see this happening again next year. What, what else are the farmers telling you? I mean, we have one farmer from your jurisdiction here, but what are other farmers telling you as the Farm Bureau? Countywide, everyone is saying, where are we going to get water? Where, where does the, when are the needs of the community as a whole going to take precedence over these, these fish and what these courts are ruling? Um, it's really frustrating when we don't have the storage that we need to really survive, like the past couple of years have been wonderful rain years. We've, got, we've done the best we can in our situation, and we're still not doing well in our one rough year, which is this critical year we're in right now. And the good part about this movie that we, we have that Juan Carlos did for us is that it brings to light that this isn't the farmer versus the fish. This is the fish versus the community. The community and, and in all honesty, the entire Central Valley. Do you think that this will happen again? I mean, for a while the pumps were off, correct? Yes, uh, back in the winter time, Actually, at the time when the rivers were running at the fullest, the pumps were shut down. And we lost an estimated 800,000 acre feet because the pumps were shut down for about 60 days. Um, after that, the year turned out to be a drought, so there was no more water to be captured. So we lost that opportunity to capture a great deal of water, and, and we didn't. I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit and stir the pot here. What about the people who say, who cares? The rich farmers have land, all the land in the world. They have all the product in the world. Well, we don't have all the land in the world, <laughs> first of all. We do have a lot of land out there. But that land produces a lot of food for the country. It produces a lot of jobs. And it also contributes to the economy of the valley and the state. When we grow a crop, we use machinery that's built elsewhere. We buy materials that come from outside of the valley. Um, and when our crops are harvested, we ship it all over the country. And so each farm dollar that we produce at the farm gate 
is leveraged maybe four or five times by the time it gets to its end, end uh, consumer. So now let's bring in the filmmaker. How did you catch wind of this and why did you get involved in this project? I mean, as someone in video production, there are a ton of topics we can do projects about. You chose this one, why? Well, I chose it because it happened uh, to happen where I live at. I think that's the number one reason. And so when I was there, I did not know the, the, there was really a water situation until I started hearing about uh, a march that was gonna happen uh, that year in 2009 because of this decision that was uh, put in place. So, but before that, uh, the, like two years before that, I, s I, had start, I had started seeing fields uh, just dried up all around. And I thought it was just because there's no, you know, there's not raining. Uh, and so when I heard the 2009 issue, then I knew there was something bigger than that. And it was because it was not just water. There was other restrictions in place. So, so that's why I, I got into the movie. We're going to watch a trailer of this movie that you all participated in in a little bit. And actually, I recognize you from the movie as well. So people are going to ask you for your autograph very soon. <laughs> um, but before we do that and before we go to the trailer, is there a website or information where people can find out more information? Well, they can always go to, for the film, they can go to the fightforwaterfilm.com where they can find information, everything about the film, uh, where it's screening and all, the, and all that information. Now, let's go ahead and play that trailer of this movie that was created called The Fight for Water. Let's take a look. Upper restrictions in, in, in the Delta uh, has, has stopped the water right there. Department of Fish and Wildlife. They were sued by environmental groups to protect the Delta smelt. Well, what that did effectively was that cut back water that would would have been delivered to us. So we're the first ones to take the hit. We're the first ones to be cut back. And we're the ones who are cut back the most severe. It's a, it's a momentous occasion. Because we have one cause. For far too long, the environmental is on to uh, secure the well-being of a fish above our lives. That's not gonna happen. For a long time, They've taken all the media, and it's pretty difficult, even I find it difficult, because we're not against them. If there's anyone who knows and appreciates the value of land, it is us who toil in it all the time. Why would we want to contaminate the source of our income? We know what it is to grow fruit. We know what it is to pick it. We know the expense, the cost, the sweat, the tears. We know all of that, but look at us. We're exactly like you are. We have the same issues. We share the same land. We have the same interests. There is no reason why this coalition couldn't have existed a long time ago. We want to send a noise, a shout, a holler that will be heard in Sacramento all the way down to Washington, D.C., where Mr. Obama resides. All the politicians have to realize it's going to scare the hell out of them. Yeah. It's got to scare the hell out of them to know that yeah. Mr. Johnson and Mr. Romero and Rodriguez are friends now. Maybe God is testing us. Maybe we're going through hard, difficult times just so we can see the value of each other. Because when it's all said and done, we all bleed the same color. We're all God's children. There are many today that are crying. Hay muchos que hoy están llorando. There are many today who have that same fear within their lives. Hay muchos que tienen ese mismo temor en sus miradas, en sus caras. That's why we're here. Por eso es que estamos aquí. Nosotros, lo que venimos a pedir, what we have come to ask here today, is that the studies stop and the action begins. The only thing we, we might not survive is this water issue here. This is the only thing we might not survive. Welcome back. We just saw a trailer of the fight for water. We have the documentary maker here in the studio, Juan Carlos. Great work on the documentary, no. by the way. Well, well thank you. <laughs> Before I mm -hmm. continue to ask you about the documentary, I'd like to ask the farmer, talk about those people that were in line getting food from the community food bank. 
Those were people that could have been working had the water been turned on, correct? That is correct. In 2009, in the city of Mendota, there was a, over 45% unemployment. And that's, that's, um, that's completely unacceptable. In an area that is one of the uh, greatest agricultural areas in the world, in the peak of harvest, um, you have all these farm workers that are anxious to work, not working. And it's simply because there were hundreds of thousands of acres that went unplanted because of lack of water. Now, most of these people were getting help from the, uh, from the food banks and so forth, uh, but they would much rather be working. The, the food that is given out is fine. It helps feed the families, but it doesn't pay the rent. It doesn't buy their kids' shoes. It doesn't buy their kids' school supplies. So they would rather be working, and you'll hear it in the film, and I've heard, heard it from them directly. That's what, that's what they want. Talk about the film a little bit and, and what the critics are saying. I mean, is, are people saying that this is a great film? I mean, are people saying, wow, I didn't realize that the lack of water created such a chain reaction? Yeah, well, you just hit it right there. That's what the, uh, actually, that's the reaction I've been getting from people because this is eye-opening to them. They didn't think that situations like this is happening here in the Central Valley and actually here in the U.S. because it seems like this is like third world uh, situation happening where it only happens somewhere else. It doesn't happen here in America. Uh, so that is what kind of surprises people. Uh, and I think there's unintended consequences uh, because of that ruling uh, that caused this. So that is uh, what I've been hearing from these people. How can people help you? I mean, what can we do to help you and also you have some screenings coming up. Where are these screenings going to take place? Well, the uh, people can go help out, uh, actually, to my website. They can help me. If they are interested in my filmmaking and that I continue the same kind of films, uh, they can always donate uh, so that I can continue to do that. Uh, I'm an independent filmmaker. Uh, that's how I make films. Uh, so it, it depends on the people. And they actually, the film is screening at, uh, it actually just got accepted to a film festival in LA, in Monrovia, California. And it was nominated for a couple of awards. Uh, so I, I'm excited that outside of the Central Valley, people are paying attention and giving, giving the, uh, the film uh, that kind of attention and that kind of notice. So either of you can ask, answer this question for me. Again, this is a question to stir the pot a little bit. Why should we care? I mean, I have a job, I'm paying my bills, so what? Tough times happen. So what? We don't have water. Why should I care about this whole situation? I've got my own problems in life. I've got my own family. Who cares? Either of you can take a stab at that. I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is based in Fresno County and Merced County. Fresno County is the number one ag producing county in the country, in the United States. This year they had a record breaking year and that's this year being 2012 numbers. Uh, Merced County is fifth in the country. Um, ag production, this is the, the Mediterranean climate. This is one of seven places in the world that is ideal for producing agriculture. Our country is expecting to grow exponentially, especially California. Where are they going to get their food supply from? This is ultimately what, what has caused the demise of several country or world's societies in the past is the lack of food and access to water. The people need to understand what is going on. Because water is so complex, people don't understand how it affects them. I mean, I still have a lot of farmers who don't understand something going on on the east side of the county impacts them on the west side of the county. Um, and ultimately, it's you eat three times a day. No matter what you do, you eat three times a day. Unless you have a phenomenal garden in your backyard, including livestock, <laughs> there's no other way you're going to get around it. We, we farmers feed you. Okay, water is going to be, it is already, one of the most limited and precious uh, resources that we have. What we're talking about is getting water from the north third of the state, where the water is abundant, to the south two-thirds of the state, where most of the people and agriculture exists. Now, there is the lynch, lynch pin that we will call the delta, that is where the water is being choked because of the environmental uh, issues there. Those pumps at the Delta don't only provide water for three million acres of, of food producing land. 
It also provides water for almost 25 million Ameri uh, uh, Californians that extend from the Bay Area all the way to San Diego. This provides water for the, the whole Southern California, Los Angeles, based in San Diego, Silicon Valley. And if you don't think that water is going to impact them, then you know they're soon going to learn that, that it is. It's very important to them. It's important to industries in those areas. It's, of course, important to, to, to people because as water gets more scarce, their water is going to become more expensive. And it's going to impact industries. It's going to impact construction. It's going to impact so many things that people do not realize right now uh, because they have not felt the shortage the way we farmers have felt it. Juan Carlos, I want to ask you more about this film a little mm -hmm. bit. Did you learn anything while creating this film? I mean, it's got to be tough going to lines of people who want to work but can't work because there's no water. It's got to be tough seeing them and seeing their need. Did you learn anything in this film? Oh, I learned quite a bit um, in terms of water uh, and in terms of filmmaking. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was quite a learning experience about the water issue, learning from, from uh, uh, farmers like Joe and George who were affected by this situation, that somebody like myself who is not really direct, uh, really involved uh, or in the agricultural um, area, we, we, I learned a lot, and I think a lot of people are going to see that through the film because I'm, I'm explaining it as I'm seeing it, as I, I'm going out and talking to people and talking to the people in the food line who were facing the situation and saying, we want to work, that's all we want to do. We want our jobs. We don't, you know, we can't survive without it. Uh, so I heard it from that, and, and it, it was really depressing to see that situa uh, situation. If you had a magic wand or if you had a wish in per talking about this movie, what would it be? Um, that uh, people, you know, people, it, that this movie gets out there. That, that's, that's my whole point that, and that's why I made it. I want people to see this film because of this situation that are caused, and I think they're, you know, they're in, unintended. It just, people need to see that there's always hardships uh, because of that. And, I'm oh, sorry, before you make a decision uh, that before anything happens, or, you know, let me rephrase that. Before, there, before you make a decision on something that you know where it's going to lead and what's going to happen because of that. Joe, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about something you mentioned earlier, which I think is interesting. You said that these people want to work and there's no jobs for them. There's a misconception out there that, you know, when the food bank or somebody gives food to people, those people want to be there and they don't want to work. You, in your experience, you're a farmer. You have some of the toughest work, working employees out there. Are you finding that still, through the tough times, people want to work? Absolutely. It's even more important during the tough times. And, and these people understand that farm work is pretty seasonal. Uh, there's a great deal of work in the summertime, and there's not much work in the wintertime. So in the, in the summertime, when we're harvesting, um, they want to take advantage of that. We have people working, as we're speaking right now, harvesting cantaloupes, and they would like to work seven days a week if possible. They don't want six days. When we were in the drought, instead of laying people off, I cut them back to five days, and believe me, they suffered. They suffered because they had to cut back uh, you know, with, with their, their family's uh, uh, support. I, two days to them is a great deal. One day to them is a great deal. You know, and uh, so they would much rather work hard as in the summertime when the crops are being harvested. They want to put in a lot of hours and a lot of days because they know in the wintertime the times are a little leaner. Mm -hmm. And in the wintertime when there's no work, it's raining, they can rely on un unemployment. But when there's work available, they really definitely want to work. So to be fair to the opposition, um, first of all, is there an opposition to this documentary? If so, what are they saying? Well, the opposition, I, I really haven't faced it uh, yet because uh, a lot of the people who have seen the film have been um, attuned to the situation that they didn't think you know, uh, that this could be happening, that some of these decisions that are put in place could have these other effects uh, because they're just thinking, you know, they, uh, of doing the right thing, and it just, 
you know, this, this is what happens. Uh, so I think that the, the, the film is for a learning experience for everybody, that stuff like this shouldn't happen before you make something or make a decision that you look at the consequences before implementing them. Amanda, I want to ask you a question. You deal with a lot of farmers in your role at the Farm Bureau in Merced. There's this misconception that the farmers are always the rich farmers, and the farmers are always making a lot of money. Do you find that you have farmers that are struggling? Every day. Um, farming in California, and I've lived throughout the country, but my home is Merced, born and raised. And throughout the country, I've met farmers who struggle, but they always say, at least I don't farm in California. And that's because it's so much more difficult here because California is, is attuned to listening to everyone and getting everyone's two cents in. You have people who are concerned about, and rightfully so, the environment, and that's where the water issue is coming from. You have air quality issues. You have everyday issues that they have to regulate on their being compliance with from the what they drive, how they drive it, how long they drive it, um, what they spray, how much they spray. <coughs> they have to test the waters. It's expensive. It is When people say red, the bottom line is getting higher, that means their expenses are getting higher. And it's unbelievable what I see. Uh, you should see guys just coming out saying, I made it on top just barely by the skin of my chinny chin chin, but I made it. And that's, that's a reality. And something I wanted to get back to on Juan Carlos's movie, the people in this movie itself, it's unique because you don't get to see farm workers in this light. Normally you talk, you hear them because they're being exploited or in, in tough situations. And this is something that these farm workers are clearly saying, like, we want to work. I mean, you could, it's heart-wrenching. It is truly heart-wrenching in this video, in this film, to watch these people go through this. And it's a family affair. It's a community. It's not maybe of just an immediate family. It is a community-wide issue. And you can see these, these lines, these food lines, people talking about it. Um, there's just a uniqueness. You, I have yet to see something like this. So, Juan Carlos, talking about the film, the people in it, were they? excited to be in it or were they saying they want to be a part of the movie I mean did you find anybody to say you know what I don't want to be involved in the movie and the reason I ask mm -hmm. is because you know when you have a film like this and people are excited to be in it or want their story told it shows you how much interest there is out there well yeah they they want they just spoke freely uh, they wanted uh, their voice to be heard uh, their situation be uh, be heard around so that I guess, you know, a situation like this can be uh, changed uh, for the better. I come from a, a, a background of migrant farm workers. So I, am, I, I know their frustration and I know their situation because uh, my parents came here uh, when I was a, a little kid and they brought me here uh, when I was eight years old. And uh, my first job was uh, <coughs> being a farm worker. They put me in the fields for two summers. And uh, that was something I did not want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I did not want to do that for the rest of my life. I want to do something different. And so I did that. And so now doing this film, I came back to those roots. I came back to where I, where I came from. And, and, it's, uh, and it's basically for my parents, for my family, for the people around me, uh, that this film is uh, for them, to give them a voice. So they know that somebody is listening and somebody's paying attention to their, uh, to their needs, that hopefully, you know, it just gets out there. And that's, that's where everybody, um, now it depends on everybody to see where this movie goes. Joe, I want to ask you, how can we as a community help someone like you? We talked a little bit about how we can help Juan Carlos, but as far as you, the farmer, how can we help you? I think, um, First of all, I think it would be great for more people to be aware of where their food comes from, how it's produced, who picks it, and what it takes to produce that food, um, and understand some of the issues that farmers uh, face, issues that are very serious, uh, serious in, in that it limits their ability to produce. Um, we, you know, we as farmers deal with all kinds of things every day. Um, we deal with all kinds of risks, with weather, diseases, pests, markets, you name it. But none of them are man-made. The only ones that are man-made are this one with the water. And, and so people should try to be informed about water. 
because, it, as I said earlier, it is going to be a huge issue for the state. And I think that they need to realize that we as a state need to upgrade our water system. Our water system is over 40 years old. It was built for a population half the size of, that it is now. And our population is naturally going to continue to grow. Farmland is not going to grow. All we can do with the farmland is try to produce more on the limited acres that we have. So I would say to people, first of all, listen to, to what we need to do to resolve this water issue. There's going to be short-term things to do, like maybe we need to relax the, envi the environmental restrictions so we can get a little bit more water. And then you have long-term solutions, too. One of them being the BDCP, or as people call it, the Twin Tunnels. That will, that will uh, make water deliveries more reliable. Uh, the other thing that's in the long term is, um, is the water bond that will provide funds for more storage. Okay, something that the, the, the state really needs is a little more storage. We have storage, as I said, built back in the 50s and 60s. We are a bigger state now. And we have, uh, I would say, potential climate change where we may have less rain or longer dry periods. We need to be able to capture and store water to get us through those dry periods. All of us, not just farms, but, but cities and people. Perfect. Thank you for that insight. You have been watching San Joaquin Spotlight, a public affairs production brought to you in partnership between 90.7 FM, KFSR Fresno, and CMAC in Fresno. Today we heard about a movie called The Fight for Wild Water. Check it out. And also thank you to, the, to our guests who came to the studio today to talk about the program. But also thank you to the volunteer crew that made this and every production possible. Tune in next week for a new edition.